here is the final draft of my episode. What I did was essentially go in and yellow in all of the lines that they kept. And then, gradually, they start getting fewer and fewer. This is what happens to a writer, <laughs> is you are written over. The original series, I suppose what interested me was that I was always interested in fantasy um, and science fiction. Uh, when The Next Generation came out, I was very skeptical because I loved the original series so much. But it was the holodeck, the holodeck in particular, that um, sort of inspired my skepticism. I thought it was too wholesome, let's put it this way. Um, they would go in, they would dress up, they would play with all of these bots especially, um, in these environments, and I thought, oh my God, um, someone could essentially, who was not nearly so um, well adjusted, could go in and recreate, say, his girlfriend that jilted him and continue their relationship. So I started writing this story about Reginald Endicott Barclay III, who was not well adjusted, but who was a genius and was admitted into a uh, uh, the Academy and somehow got on the Enterprise, but gradually started slipping because of his unhappiness and his cynicism into the holodeck. I invented the term holodiction and I sort of thought about this and thought about it. And I had a graduate student who was a Star Trek fan who liked the show and I told him my idea and he said, I know, I know an agent. I said, get out. And he gave me the name of his agent and I sent it to him, and within a week they called me. Basically, they said, we love your idea, now completely rewrite it. Uh, we like the whole idea of holodiction and somebody who goes into the, who gets addicted to the holodeck and goes in there, but you have to, you have written an entirely a B storyline. And I said, what's a B storyline? He says, well, there's an A storyline and there's a B storyline. The A storyline has a science element to it, and you have to, you have to have something that this character, Reginald Barkley, uh, will solve. And I tried everything. I racked my brains about what could be a scientific thing that they were doing. I had them at one point going down into a cave and discovering this, this substance called uh, invidium that would create some kind of force field. And every single time I came in, they said, no, no, that's boring. Um, no, we've done that already. Uh, eh. So finally, you know, about the fourth weekend, I came in and I said, this is my last idea. And if you don't like this, I quit. I said, suppose that, we'll take this in video. Suppose that it's one of these elements that is tasteless, is uh, odorless, is invisible, but it gets it gets transferred onto certain objects through perhaps something that you've picked up. But if it gets into the warp drive, it's like China syndrome in outer space. And he said, you know, you just did. I said, no, thinking he was basically going to tell me that it was awful. He said, you gave the perfect pitch. And I said, oh. I said, well, do you like it? And he said, we love it, we're gonna run with it. I thought Dwight Schultz did a fantastic job of portraying Reginald Barkley, nervous and hilarious. Um, and I have a collection of these. <laughs> it had the opposite effect that I thought it would. Suddenly, I was no longer just a medievalist. I was also a screenwriter, and I was allowed to teach film studies. I was allowed to teach speculative fiction, which is a science fiction creative writing course that I'll be doing this fall. I think that the Star Trek episode has given me more notoriety than anything I would ever write about Beowulf. <laughs> and this at least got me addressing issues that were important, I felt, about human nature with a huge audience. And I really liked that.